Hello, and welcome to Compute 175. Today, we'll discuss objects and classes. We'll discuss how classes can model things in the real world, and we'll learn how to write a Python class from scratch. Then, we'll learn about the components of a class, methods, and attributes, and how to use classes by creating instances. These are dice. Their purpose is to create a random number from 1 to 6. The way that you do this is by rolling them, like so. Ooh, was, was uh, lucky this time, got all sixes. But sometimes I'm not so lucky. Let's try that again. There we go. So we have some twos and some fours. An interesting aspect of dice is that they're not only in these cube shapes where there are six sides, but are also dice that look like this. For example, here is a d20. It has 20 sides. And the purpose of it is to create or give you a random number from 1 to 20. So let's try it. Uh, 13. Uh, could do better. And equally, there are dice of different sides. Like, that's a d12. We have a d10, a d8, and a d4. So we see that it has an attribute in that... It has a integer number of sides. And the purpose, the thing that you actually do with them, is to roll it and get a random number. How does this translate to Python? Back in Wing 101, I'll write a class in Python that will define the attributes and behavior of dice. To recap, dice have one attribute, how many sides it has. And dice have one behavior roll a die to get a random integer. The singular form of the word dice is die. So I'm going to go ahead and start naming my class class die. Ominous. Let's start by defining the behavior of all die objects. As stated earlier, a die can be rolled to produce a random integer. To define behavior, we will create a new method. A method is a function defined within a class. Methods add behaviors to a class. The behavior I want to add to all instances of the die class is roll. So I'll define a new method called roll. Def roll self. The first argument of all methods is self. Later in the video, I'll explain what this self argument actually is, but for now, we'll just ignore it. Our roll method should return a random integer. What if I don't know how to generate a random integer in Python? Let's use the web to figure out how to do this in Python 3. So I'm going to go over to my favorite search engine to search for Python 3 random integer. Near the top of the results is a link to Python's official documentation. I'll click the link for Python 3.6's documentation, as that is the version I'm using. So this is the page for the random module. Since it's a module, I'll need to use an import statement before I can use it in Python. Let's keep that in mind. Because this documentation is for a large module, it has a lot of content that is irrelevant for the task at hand. So I'll search in the page for something about random int. And there we go. The random module defines a function called randint that returns integer n such that a is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to b. In other words, a number between a and b inclusive. That's perfect. Let's go back to wing 101. At the very top of the file, I'm going to say import random. Then, back in my role method, I'll use random.randint to return a number between 1 and 6. So return random.randint. 1 to 6. Now, my dice class will behave like a six-sided dice when I roll it. So let's try it out. OK, to actually get a die object, we need to instantiate it. We can do this by treating the class like a function. So I'll call the class die with no arguments. And it will return a new die object. Let's actually store that in a variable. And I'll call the variable d6 because it's a six-sided die.
Cool. So now we have an instance of the die class. We can check this by using the type function, type of d6. So d6 is a die object. Now for the moment of truth, let's roll this d6, d6.roll. And it produces a random integer. Let's try it a few more times, d6.roll, d6.roll, d6.roll. It seems to be working. OK, let's create a 20-sided die. This time, I'll call that d20. d20 equals die. And let's roll it. d20.roll. Gives us back three. OK, reasonable. d20.roll. An another three. OK. d20.roll. Uh-oh. d20.roll again. It seems to be fixed. Let's try that one more time. Hmm. This d20 is acting a lot like a d6, our six-sided die. Is it the same object? To check for this, I'll use the id function. The id function gives me the memory address of an object. So I'll check the address of d6, and I'll check the address of d20. Those look different, but I'll try it in a equality statement. d6 double equals to id d20. So that's false. The d6 and the d20 are different objects in memory. So they're not the same object, but they act the same. What's going on here? You may have noticed that I always generate a number from 1 to 6 in my roll method. So the behavior is always that of a six-sided die. We want the behavior to depend on an attribute of the object. Well, for that to happen, we need to define attributes on our die objects. Let's go back to the definition of die. To define new attributes, I'll create a special method called double underscore init double underscore. So def double underscore init double underscore, which takes a self argument, as all methods do. To define attributes on an object, we perform an assignment like this self dot sides equals something. Remember self? Self is how you refer to this particular instance of a class, the instance that is relevant right now. You can use self to access the attributes and methods of this instance. So we want to specify when we instantiate a new die object, how many sides do I want this die to have? So I'll add an argument to the init method called how many. So it will take two arguments, self and how many. And I'll assign how many to the number of sides. So self.sides equals how many. Now that we've added the sides attributes to the die objects, let's make use of it. The sides attribute of a die determine the maximum integer when rolling. So let's modify our roll method to use the value of the sides attribute. So instead of randint 1 to 6, we're going to define randint 1 to self.sides. This is how I access an attribute on a particular instance. So let's try this out. Let's instantiate a d6. So d6 equals die. Now it's giving us an error. If we read the error message, it's trying to tell us that I forgot to specify an argument, namely how many sides. So I'll fix that by specifying the d6 equals die. How many sides do I want? Well, six sides. Equivalently, let's create that d20 again. d20 equals die. How many sides? 20. To confirm the d6 has how many sides, let's access its sides attribute, d6.sides. It gives us back 6. And the d20, how many sides does it have? d20.sides. 20 sides. All right, so let's roll some dice. d6.roll. Hey, I got a 6. Let's try that again. Another six. Ooh, oh, broke the chain. Got a two this time. All right, let's roll that d20. d20.roll. Another two. Three, rolling low. Ah, but got a natural 20. Nice. 
The takeaway about objects and classes, if I ask one instance of a die to roll, I should get back a random number. And if I ask a completely different, unrelated instance of a die to roll, it should also give me back a random number. Let me show an example of this. So in addition to my d6 and my d20, I'm also going to find the other dice, like d4 equals die of four sides, d8 equals the die of eight sides, and uh, d12 is a die of 12 sides. OK. So now we have a whole bunch of instances, all of the die class. Since they're all instances of the same class, they all know how to respond to the same methods. So for die in, and I'm going to create a list of d4 to d6, d8, d12, and d20. OK. I'm going to print how many sides that die has. So print die.sides. And I'm also going to print a sample roll of that die. Notice how inside the for loop, I don't specify one particular die. I'm talking about any die in general. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So I rolled d4, and I got a back a 1. I rolled a d6, and got back a 6. I rolled a d8, also got back an 8. Pretty lucky. I rolled a d12, got back a 3. Not as lucky. And I rolled a d20, and I rolled a natural 1. And that's the point of classes. They hide the internals, but provide a common interface, so you don't have to think about how the behavior is implemented. Just that object will perform that behavior. How it's done is irrelevant. In this video, we've learned about how we can define classes to model behavior of real-world things. We learned how to write methods to define the behavior of objects, and attributes that define an object's internal state. We touched on how objects and classes allow us to forget about implementation details. In future videos, we'll explore the concepts of abstraction and encapsulation further.